On behalf of the chaplaincy of St. Paul's School, welcome to this very special and unusual celebration of a festival of lessons and carols. Our service is modelled on the renowned service from King's College Chapel in Cambridge, England, which recently celebrated its 100th anniversary. The service was first held there in 1918 at the close of World War I and seeks to anticipate and celebrate the wondrous story of the Christmas season. Since 1919, the service has always opened, as we do tonight, with the singing of Once in Royal David's City, building in procession from solo treble voices to full choir, congregation, and organ. This annual tradition was started at St. Paul's School in 1970 by my predecessor at the school, Mr. Jim Wood. Jim was instrumental in the building and development of chapel music and of the academic music program at the school. And we dedicate this service, the 50th annual SPS Lessons and Carols, to his memory. This has been an unusual year. Our choir rehearsals have taken place under safe conditions, in small groups, with masks on, culminating in the recording of this well-beloved annual reflection. This service will not take place in real time. However, while we cannot invite you all to stand and sing the familiar congregational carols in the normal way, we do hope that you will follow along in the downloadable program, singing to your heart's content whilst looking at the screen of your choice. Please be assured that when you see the choir members singing from behind their masks, they're doing so with great care and commitment, even though you cannot see their faces. Please also be assured that when masks were removed, this was done with great care for everybody's safety and only when the video was recorded separately from the audio and not with the full-bodied joyful singing that we have all missed so much these many months. All in all, we hope that this video representation of Lessons and Carols brings you into the joyful anticipation of the season, allows you a glimpse inside our chapel in a different way, and communicates the love and respect we all hold for this long-standing St. Paul's School tradition. So, welcome to this special event, and please sit back and enjoy the sounds of the carillon as we usher in the 50th annual Festival of Lessons and Carols. Thank you for joining us.
Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of the birth of Christ with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and justice on earth, and for the unity of all peoples, especially in this country and in this city. And particularly because Jesus loves them, let us remember in his name, the poor and helpless, the cold and hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, and all who are in prison. Finally, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that whole multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. And now let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The almighty God bless us with grace Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and he said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns, also thistles, shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Thanks be to God. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God.
prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make of him quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. With righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them, and a cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat the straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play in the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord, and the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. Gabriel salutes the blessed Virgin Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. 
Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. The shepherds go to the manger. 
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Thanks be to God.
led by the star to Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where their young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Thanks be to God. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of the world. 
And that light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth everyone that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. In this holy time of Advent, on the threshold of Christmas, amidst the challenges with which we are wrestling, we are grateful to be reminded of the story when God entered the world in a dark time, in a place that was forlorn, to a people who had lost hope, and who, in the midst of all that, became the word that shined in the darkness. This season, let us go even unto Bethlehem, where the word was made flesh. And in that journey, may you be blessed 
with the patience of the shepherds in their field, the joy of the wandering sages, and the peace and love of the Holy Family. May God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the school, the city, the nation, and all the nations of the world, peace and concord. And to us and to all God's people everywhere, life everlasting. And so may we continue to watch, to wait, and to embrace this Christmas hope now more than ever. May we receive the love divine that loves excelling the joy of heaven to this earth come down. Amen.